You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benning Rome. And I said I knew just like the back of my hand. Oh, that's new. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week I am joined by what I'm going to call a conglomeration of lovely, <laughs> that is Mist Kinsman. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Yeah. A conglomeration of lovely. I'm calling a conglomeration of lovely. <laughs> what would I'm you saying, really call me? Saying, <laughs> what have you got for us this week? Well, this week I'm talking about a celebrity who's bared all, and then we have our game to play in Game of the Week. And that's before Mist shows us his blowing skills in Crafty Queens. On screen now, you can see our social media. Just search for at the Cud TV. And as people who have popped up on the comments that go along the bottom of our screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. Have you ever been considered a miracle baby? No, certainly not been considered a miracle baby, no. A mistake, but not a miracle baby. You see, I always call it it's a miracle he's still alive. Because I, I was a child that liked to climb things and lick things and put fingers in sockets. Yeah, nothing much has changed before you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I could see what you were going for. Yeah, th there, was, there was no need. There was no, there was need. no need. Yeah, a Simple rimming joke. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a story about a doctor in Beijing mm -hmm. who has announced that there is a child who has been born with a four-inch tail. He said it's... it's Incomplete degeneration. Mm -hmm. So as I see the child was forming in the womb, um, the spinal cord um, stayed outside a little bit. Oh, OK. And so it so it's not a proper tailbone then, because we've all got those. It's, it's not a coccyx. It's not a coccyx. It's not a coccyx. It's actually part of the child's spinal column that oh. has grown out. Um, oh, no. So they can't choppy choppy because paralyzy paralyzy. Yes. Um, that's a bit lighthearted of medical drama. <laughs> <laughs> choppy choppy paralyzy paralyzy. Um, is it? So it's functional then. Well, not, just outside. It's not. Well, it's, it's functional as in it's part of the spinal column. Yes. It's not functional as in it can climb trees and hang upside down. <laughs> we think. Monkey boy. Monkey boy. They there. Monkey boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, the blurry bit is the bum. Yes. Because we yeah, don't we, need we, to see a baby. We don't bum. need to see a baby's bum. No. no. Um, but yeah, apparently it happens quite often that, that this um, that the spine can grow outside of a person, mm -hmm. right? But normally it's only a little bit, so they can tuck it back in, sort of thing. So what are they going to do? They don't know yet because they're not because if they can't cut it off, every time he sits on his bum, his legs are going to go numb, possibly, or have some other nervous interaction. If he sits on his bum, his you know arm might go up. What happens every time he wipes his bum? I don't know. I'm more concerned about actually pooping because you're going to have to hold it. <laughs> Maybe get some gaffer tape. Gaffer tape does solve everything. Gaffer tape. Stick yeah. it on your back and it's like, but yeah. Oh, the poor thing. Poor little child. Well, they're still young enough and growing that they can do things, I suppose. But, hmm. Yeah. I just think that's interesting. It is interesting. It is interesting, yeah. But, yeah. Um... From from one growth to another. Mm -hmm. um, well, not quite. Have you got you got a pet, haven't you? I I I I, I don't have a pet. I have my neighbour's pet. Oh yeah, you've stolen a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it it comes around. It spends some time with me. It just likes hanging out. Uh huh. And so it it comes around and eats food that you bought for it, and uses the litter tray that you got for it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and, and and has toys that I bought for it. And, and half stolen a cat. I've basically half stolen a cat. Oh. We have tracked down the owners, though, so I am going to go round and... Uh, say say I've half stolen your cat. Sorry I've about that. I've stolen your cat. I'm so sorry I've stolen your cat. No, I, I haven't <laughs> stolen the cat. I've tracked them down, and I'm going to go and speak with the neighbours and say, I'm terribly sorry, I think I have your cat. Apparently they have a uh, young toddler who just won't stop fiddling with it, and that's why it's run away. Okay. So I'm taking care of a traumatised cat. Okay. An angry pussy, if you will. It's a legal thing, can't wait to happen. Um, <laughs> well, this is a story about a lady who, who, whose hamster sadly passed away. Oh, no, Richard Gere didn't get hold of it, did they? Well, what do you mean, Richard Gere? Do you not know the rumour? That what is rumor? a very, very old rumour about Richard Gere. What's the old rumour? Um, I, I believe it's called felching. Okay. 
Uh, and that's where you take a small Believe rodent. It. No, that's not felching. No, what's it? What, oh, what's, what is it then? Felching is when you go da da inside someone go nom 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 nom. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Well, I believed it was called felching, uh -huh. uh, but it's where you take a small rodent, a, a, a tube of some kind, and insert it in somebody's bottom. Oh, okay. And famously, Richard Gere was accused of this. Okay. They don't like it. <laughs> no, not that. It's bad. abuse of animals, and it's a very, very bad thing. Quite funny, but bad. And also, claws. Yeah. Oh, no. Tearing. Anal tearing. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, um, it's a lady who took a dead hamster around Europe as ashes, which is less disturbing than having one up your arse. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, oh. her dead hamster apparently loved to travel. Well, so she took it abroad before when it was alive, then? No. What happened was, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. this lady built cardboard replicas of cities in Europe and put the hamster in them. Oh, that's adorable. And said that the hamster loved to travel. That's really cute. Slightly weird <laughs> that she's gone, I've built a model of Paris and the hamster loves to travel because I've put them in a car... Hamsters in a wooden in cardboard is going, I've got lots of shit I can chew here. Yay! Did, did, um, did, did she feed them, like, croissants and stuff so they felt the real Paris Parisian experience? No, but she was rude to them in restaurants. Um, <laughs> Um, and so now that the, the hamster's dead, she has cremated it and is taking the ashes round European cities. How did she cremate it? I had a toaster, I think. I probably <laughs> took it to a vet. Popped it in the breath and squeezed Air it. Air fryers down. are very popular these days. <laughs> <laughs> After it's done, pop it in the blender, spin it up, done. Well, <laughs> crispy fried hamster. Anyway, um, <laughs> nom 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 nom. Um, so yeah, um, so she's basically got the ashes, she's taking it around to European cities and things. Mm -hmm. But she's not taking the whole of the hamster because it needs to be under fifty milliliters. So she's taking some of the hamster ashes. Does, does she know <laughs> which <you>? bit? <laughs> well, it's ashes. <laughs> She goes, it's just, it's she did put it in the right toast. Leg. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> she might have been turned into ashes and portions. Couldn't get all of it into the breville. Leg sticking out one end, tail coming out the other. Well, that's the best bit of the toasty, though, the bits that stick on the end. <laughs> anyway, and if you want to eat a deep fried hamster like a toasty, share it with us at The Good TV. <laughs> and that brings us nicely onto our story of the week. No, 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 no. Would you like a toasty? <laughs> <laughs> I should feel quite hungry now. I could just go for a cheese toasty. Cheese and hamster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's what they would have wanted. Cheese and hamster. <laughs> cheese and hamster. That's what, yeah, I was clever. I thought about it. It wasn't. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you feel about art? I love art. You love art? Yes. What's your favourite artist or piece of art? Oh, I can't remember who the artist is, um, but if I remember what it was called correctly, Brick was the one that most impressed me. And it's just a series of bricks formed in a mathematical way that's like a perfect, perfect size. Is that a house? No, it, it was just a, a, just a row of, of bricks. bricks. Just a row of bricks. Just formation of Were bricks. Were you walking past a building site? <laughs> No, it was a proper actual art installation, and I really liked the ideas behind it. Was it I like in, modern art. I actually was do it really like in an art, art place. Yes. Was, okay. It wasn't yeah. that someone's just put a post on a pile of bricks. Uh, going. I go to galleries. I I, I go to like, exhibitions and things occasionally when I was paid to because I used to work for the Arts Council. <laughs> there we go. Um, and when they say go to an exhibitionist, that's not what they mean. Um, <laughs> What's well, a story from Copenhagen? Mm hmm. Mr. Jens Harding, Mr. Jens Harding, okay, has been ordered to return seventy-seven thousand dollars after selling two pieces of art. Okay. okay. Were they um, that bad? Well, he's called the the artwork. Take the money and run. Uh huh. Okay, and has provided two blank canvases. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's clever. So, yeah. Oh, that's very, very art, clever. He's called it Take the Money and Run and did. I really like that. I think that's worth the 77000 Do you really? Yeah. I can do you a copy of it for 20 quid. <laughs> 
the canvas is only 99p that's a big markup but that's what I mean. The, why I really like, I do really like Modern Art because it's it's the concept and the idea behind it, and even just putting the title to it and, and and running it like that is is art in itself. That's actually genuinely very clever and and brilliant, and and that's that's the kind of art I really like. I think if you're going to do a picture and try to make it to it, just take a photo. I, I quite like. See, I think that most art that we see these days isn't art. Mm -hmm. because it's either done for a claim or for monetary reward. Mm -hmm. It's not really art. I think the purest form of art you can get is graffiti in a toilet wall. I, I, I wouldn't deny that, actually. Because there are some cracking pieces of graffiti in the Molly house. Very, very nice. But I <laughs> Manchester, go down there and check out the loos. They've got cracking graffiti. Go down there. It's up three flights of stairs. <laughs> it's up three got flights of stairs. very desperate for, to pee in the Molly house. <laughs> The expedition team to get up. Uh, <laughs> can't do it drunk. Let's try. <laughs> it's narrow stairs as well. Um, my favourite one ever is someone's put a coat hanger, mm -hmm. right, and it's like the two armed ones. Oh, I know. Right, and it says, angry octopus wants to fight you. And it's just, it makes me smile. Right, that, that's art. Um, yeah. And that's all from the buzz this week. Uh, thanks for that, Mike. Do you love an angry octopus? And a hamster and cheese toasting. Um, a pleasure as always. So coming up next, after this break, it's Mist and the Showbiz News. You're watching Chew in the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Mist. So, do we like Jedward? <sighs> yes and no. Why so? So, now that they've stopped making music, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? I think some of their posts are funny on Instagram and things, and I think they're... The really good comic timing, and I think they're brilliant allies to everybody in the LGBTQI mm -hmm. community. If they release any more music, that will turn to a hard no. <laughs> they are actually, I mean, they've still got the whole shtick with the giant hair and, and they've got boyish brand. looks and stuff like that, but they're beginning to fill out a bit now and looking kind of handsome. It has been a while for you, though, hasn't it? It has been a while, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. You know, it's been a while when you start going, hello, Jedward. <laughs> They're in the news again. They're, they're back. Um, but this is because ex, um, because Celebrity Big Brother is back. And on mm -hmm. Celebrity Big Brother at the moment is Louis Walsh, who used to be their mentor when uh, they were on X Factor. Yeah. So there's I been a bit like of a... Louis Walsh. Uh, well, he, he's not been making... See, they are quite handsome now these days. Or at least they're coming along. I could see in... A, give them ten years and they'll be right, right for me. But anyway... <laughs> how, do you know how old they are? No, not really. In their 30s. They're in their 30s now. They still look about 12, which is not good for me. Not, not, no. But look, gay hair. Very gay hair. Gay I, hair. Yeah. And trans leg too, so... They are very, very well coiffed, I have to say. Yeah. Not really my style, but coiffed. Yeah. Anyway. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> Louis's been on um, Celebrity Big Brother, because that's back again now. And, uh... Because they talk on these shows, because, you know, people ask them things and they must forget that they're being filmed constantly 24-7, even though they've signed up for this stuff. Um, he was having a bit of a chat about them and reflecting on his uh, time with them back in 2009. And he said, they were, vo they were vile, but they were great. I got five million quid for them. I swear on my mother's life. They were vile, but they were a novelty. It was great for the show and it's what, uh, it was all for the show. Mm -hmm. Which I think is actually probably a fair reflection because they were a novelty act. 100%. But, yeah, a apparently they're just horrible human beings that are terrible to work with. According to Louis Walsh. According to Louis Walsh, yes. That everybody hates. <laughs> uh, Jedward have obviously seen and heard this because it's, it's TV, so they've responded to this. Um, apparently they say Louis Walsh is a cold-hearted bastard uh, who didn't even send us flowers when our mum died, um, knowing that their mother died back in 2019. Mm -hmm. Um... Would you have sent flowers if you used to manage them ten years earlier? I don't. I might have sent them a, a lovely message. Mm -hmm. Flowers or not, because um, they're in Ireland. Yeah, interflora is expensive at the best of times. Just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't maybe. know who who I have sympathy for really, because I, I just don't care about them. I, I you see. I think 
personally, for having had experiences with people who have had experiences with Louis Walsh, mm -hmm. being very cagey here for a reason, um, <laughs> he's a <laughs> eagle. He's is he <laughs> absolute. You heard it here first. And that's why I'm not. I'm being very vague <laughs> about who I've had conversations with. Um, okay, before we get into any litigation, let's move on to the next story. <laughs> so, um, a, a while back, we talked about some gay footballers. We did. We did. We did. And you got me talking about football again. And uh, you I like this. balls. I do like balls, but in pairs, in shorts, and, and, and not running up and down a field for... Mm, They're in shorts. They are in shorts, but... And that. I just don't like sport. Okay. But I do like gay footballers. I have a lot of respect for you. Um, so. <laughs> respect. I just didn't That's think I'd ever, ever, ever have to be talking about That's sport. That's what we're calling it. That's what we're calling it. Respect. respect. Punch double. Respect. <laughs> Anyway, the footballer, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, I do apologise, because I respect you, uh, is footballer Josh... <laughs> <laughs> respect you. Uh, he's a bit too skinny for me, to be fair, for uh -huh. cracking one off. But, um, Didn't stop you. Yeah, foot footballer Josh Cavallo, uh -huh. or Cavallo? I don't know, uh, has announced his engagement to his fiancé, Leighton Morell, and he popped the question at the... Um, Adelaide United FC, Cooper Stadium. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's obviously getting support from his team and the people he plays for. It's it's actually pretty lovely. Cause, it is um, lovely. Yeah, it is. Because he came out uh, back in 2021. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he at the time, I think, was the first openly gay footballer in the world. And that's a big thing. Active. So openly gay and active footballer. Yes, 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 exactly. So there's exactly. been a lot of people that have bravely come out after their career no longer depends mm -hmm. on it. Exactly. Gareth Thomas. Um, well, even that's a big deal. It is I a wouldn't big deal. do that, but it is something more to do it whilst you're still in there and you're going to have the crowd shouting. He's had some injuries and been off the pitch for stuff, but he is an active player and come back. And he's even had death threats and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it is a truly brave thing to do. Yeah. And it's not just him being brave doing it. It's that they've let him use the stadium to do um, his proposal and it's all big news and stuff. It's that the team supporting him as well. And I think that's actually kind of amazing yeah. and pretty beautiful. So as much as I can't stand football, hats off to you, lads. Hats off. And they're both hideous people. Look at the ugly faces. Oh, come on. Look at his calves. Oh, no, that's no, cracking. I, <laughs> I, was being, I, was, I, was, I was lying. <laughs> they're both beautiful. They are. Yeah. Handsome men having a lovely life. I hate them. Good for them. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> so, um, any other celebrities that you know that are getting hitched this year? Not that I'm aware of and not that I care, because I'm a sad, lonely bastard who uh, is very, very cynical about other people having love. Or having a cat. Mm, like that's what I have to deal now. with. <laughs> <laughs> An angry pussy that belongs to somebody else. <sighs> Anyway, mm -hmm. our third story. Yes. As, as we've already discussed, I, I have a love of the arts. Uh-huh. Now, we've had the Oscars recently. We have had the Oscars. And I, I love film as an we art medium as well. Yeah, yeah, the awards were done. As much as I do love film and I do love the arts, it's a very, very long show to watch. Mm. And there's been a lot of news with it, with um, the I'm Just Ken performance, that was huge, and mm -hmm. Oppenheimer winning absolutely everything. They completely mopped the awards. Well, they did, they did a lot. They didn't win everything. There was a couple they didn't win. There were a couple, but they were the winners of the night, They, they right? did very well, but it's a very good movie. But it's a long show. I've never sat all the way through it all, even though I care about the medium. Um, so sometimes some of the more arts based, the craft, the the, the, uh, the the people behind the shows that put it all together don't get noticed amongst the best actresses and, <laughs> and, and, and best films. That's all people care about. So I thought people may have missed this. We should highlight one of the lesser considered categories oh, it's because... An international film, aren't we? <sighs> We're going to look at costume. OK. Because I think the awards for costume are, are, are very important and, and what costume departments do for people is, is in films is just a really unsung hero of the entire medium. Just clothes. So 
It was being announced by John Cena. Okay, not an unattractive and, man. Yeah, he did it naked. What? Yeah. And I thought it was just important to, to That's highlight topless. the costume. That's oh. not naked. Uh, We've all seen him topless in movies. I, I, I've seen him many times topless in movies. Oh, OK, he's naked. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not aroused at all. <laughs> <laughs> you may be not. Do you know um, why? <laughs> why? What's he got on his feet? I, I, Birkenstocks. <laughs> They're Birkenstocks, yeah. Was enjoying the view until the feet. I can forgive the Birkenstocks. I can't. If, if they're pinned behind my head, I'm not going to see them. You claim to be a top again, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm both. Yeah. Um, he's got a very pronounced vein there on his arm. He does. And it's... Uh, oh, I'd lick every minute of it. Um, but I, do, I, I just appreciate what he's bringing to the arts. I, I, why I, did he do this? I just think costume is very important and that's why we should look at it. Why did he do it naked? Because he's presenting the costume design thing. It's a gag. A gag. It's called humour. That's not humour. That's that's humour. That's 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 you spending twenty minutes having one. <laughs> the there may be a reason behind it, but honestly, I didn't make my way through the news story to find <laughs> out. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm just being. I'm just, that's why you had a cigarette before. <laughs> <laughs> Finish one off, went for a cigarette. Now I know. <laughs> Doesn't smoke when he's on the show. Suddenly, oh, I just need to have a cigarette. <laughs> Cracked one out, didn't you? <sighs> Not saying no. <sighs> um, <sighs> so yeah, so he, he's done that naked. Yeah. Right. Uh, was the right wing press annoyed? I don't know. I don't give a monkey's. Just because you know they say that drag queens turn people gay. That'd have turned me gayer oh. if I was watching the Oscars and that came on. Because it's at, what, two in the morning? Oh, it's like old 80s cartoons that I grew up on. They're all in, like, bondage gear and muscle marys. It had Thunder an effect Cats. on me. You're thinking Thundercats, aren't you? No, I'm thinking He-Man. He-Man? Mm. Oh, yeah. I have actually seen that video with He-Man and Skeletor. And the website was? <laughs> OK, thanks. Uh, that's everything from the showbiz. Thanks for that, Mist. While Mist... He's doing it again. We'll give him some tissues. Um, stick around, because coming up next, we have our game of the week, maybe. <laughs> You're watching Chew in the Cud, and this week we're going to play a new game of Vexed or Vexologist. Apparently that means someone that likes flags. Um, and this one is for our ever so lovely Mist. <laughs> Off you pop. Okay. Take some tissues with you. <laughs> Game of the week. So what's going to happen is we're going to see a picture of a flag. Okay, and it's Mist's job to try and work out what the flag is representing. Okay. Um, we have a selection of them. And they're all LGBTQIA+. So, are you ready, Mist? Um, I, I, I feel after this I'm going to have to end up handing back my gay badge at the annual general meeting known as Pride. Are you, are you still allowed to keep that after you couldn't work out how to play a kazoo? Um, <laughs> put it in your mouth and blow it. Anyway, um, so, shall we get the first one up and see if you get it? Okay, okay. Okay, so what's the first one look like? So what is that flag called, or known as? Uh, that, that's your normal pride rainbow flag, isn't it? Normal pride rainbow flag is the answer we've been given. Um, I f Is it a so good time to mention um, I'm actually colour blind? <laughs> we can mention it. <laughs> is that why you've picked that shirt? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's purple and green, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lie, you know it is. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So let's have a look at the answer. Okay. Yay! See, I'm not a complete incompetent. It's very odd. Hasn't that not been replaced, though? We don't use that anymore. The yeah. NHS has stolen it. The NHS has stolen it, which I think we should still use it as well. Yes. Just to say, every time someone's going, yay for the NHS, it's like, ah, you're supporting gays as well. Yeah. That'll show them. Yeah, that'll show them. Um, <laughs> that's not the first iteration of the, of the rainbow flag, though. No, no. The the rainbow flag changed because it had it was a, 
a few colours to start with. Mm-hmm. And then they And each colour has a different meaning, doesn't it? No, that's it? what this one is now. So yeah, one yeah, with yeah. different colours has different meanings, so you've got health and pride and all that sort of stuff. Um, but before oh, that, I just thought it was the hanky code. Uh, the original one was hit towards the hanky code kind of idea. Um, but the, the this one that we know as the, the standard rainbow flag is actually the second inter- iteration of that. Ah. Yeah. Next one. What flag do you think this is? So what what flag is that? Um, is it a, is is it a cake? An upside down cake? It, it looks like the like sponge and icing, but but fallen over. Is it a flag of cake? Okay. Um, if you'd have said a rhubarb and custard sweet, I'd probably been a bit more on the board. But <laughs> um, should we find out what it is? Uh, please inform me, enlighten me, educate. Oh, it's the lesbian pride flag. Good for them. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> Shall we get the next one up then? <sighs> I, I really, I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I really don't know. Um, so they are part of the uh, LGBT community. Cause he'll laugh. Um, oh, so I do process of elimination. Do a pro- process well, we've, of elimination. We've, we've, we've had the L, so let's say it's the, the B. Is it, is it the bisexuals? Let's say let's see if it's the bisexuals. It's Yay! The bisexuals. I, 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 I am full solidarity, and I will remember that's your flag from ever now. From ever now. From ever now. Well, from ever now to ever then. Let's have a look at the next one. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, okay. That that's a, a a lot of different layers. Um, oh, let's just work our way down the list and, and pretend that I know. I don't think they're the transsexual colours, um, or it's some of them maybe. But I don't. I don't think it. Uh, but let, let's say transsexual. Okay. So the best way to describe it, if you don't find anyone sexually attractive, anyone. Mm. Oh, okay. Asexuals. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. It is the asexual flag. Mm-hmm. Should we I've... get the next one up? There's LGBTQ dot plus 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 plus. Oh, um, that's the gay Irish. The gay Irish. The gay Irish. The gay Irish have a flag. They have their own flag. They do. Bagora, pot of gold, gay Irish. Yeah, it should see what they do against the Blarney Stone. Um, <laughs> a romantic. Should we get the next one up then? Oh yes, please. Now that looks more like the transsexual colours that I was thinking of. That is the trans flag. I know that. Yeah. Should we get the answer up for, for the trans flag? Yay! Brilliant. Good. Yeah. I'm glad I got that one. Yes. I, <laughs> uh, two. Well, I have two. a few. I have a few trans friends, and I would have felt like I'd, I'd let them down if I didn't I, know. I that do. One. I actually like the trans flag colour scheme. Yeah, yeah. I like the pastel colour that, flag. That's why it stood out to me because the pastel colours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it wasn't the shape of the flag and the stripes. I, I had no idea. But the colours, I got the colour scheme. Cool. Um, Shall we get the next one up then? Oh, now you're pushing it, really. Is that Venezuela? It's not Venezuela, no. Just and it's not the former Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> you're, you're thinking it's a country rather than actual. LGBT. I, I honestly don't know. There are so there are so many different um, factions of, of our, our wonderful queer community. We are, we are so diverse, which is a brilliant thing. Um, so if I gave you the hint of saying, um, you were, you and I are binary. Oh, non-binary. Let's have a look. It is the non-binary ah, Again, my non-binary friends will be very, very offended. and They're all going to tell me off. They, well, they, they <laughs> specifically, are going to come and beat me up. Um, and and yeah. as a proof to those people that don't like the they pronoun, Miss just used it in a sentence, and it was correct. <laughs> Shall we see the next... Um, oh, I've got a bit on my soapbox then. <laughs> Shall we see the next flag? What Ooh. do you think? I like this one. 
Now I do recognise this one. This is one I do. I, 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 but I don't know what it is. But I, I, I recognise this one. This one is not one that looks like a country to me. I recognise uh -huh. it, but I can't remember what it's for. I thought that, that that might have been the transgender one, but we've had that. We have had that one. So it, it can't be. Um, okay. Okay. I'm not going to describe this one to you. I'm just going to give you the answer. Okay. Which is the intercept flag. Oh. Okay. Shall we get the last one up then? Oh, yes, please. Okay, okay, let's get the last one up. Get it up. Ah, now this is the new pride flag. Okay, it has a, a Pacific. This is it, a C. It has a specific name. Look, you're lucky to get the general category out of me. If you're trying to get the specific name, you're uh, going to be waiting a long time. Okay. It's the new pride flag. That's what it's going to be damn well called. Okay. <laughs> Shall we get the answer up? Progressive progress pride. pride yeah. yeah. Okay. To be, it, there is I, another version as well, which has got the intersect circle mm -hmm. in the white triangle, which I quite like as well. The, when that first came out, I have to admit, I was like, well, the original pride flag covers everybody as well. Why do we have to add? And I was originally quite annoyed about it, but mm -hmm. actually, like, the, the mate. The, the spirit behind it and the idea of just making sure that everybody really clearly knew that they were part of everything because that's what we should be about supporting each other and being together it's brilliant so i'm down with that 100%. really down with that can we just bring that back up on screen yeah um so yeah a lot of people had that that reaction um mm -hmm. when i first saw it i went oh what are they doing to the pride flag and, and had that question because i've never been emotionally attached to the pride flag mm -hmm. i've always been very much yeah i love a rainbow why not um but I am starting to become more emotionally attached to the progress flag mm -hmm. because it is a great way of showing solidarity for everybody in the LGBTQIA+. Well, that, that, that's what I thought with the first one. It's like, well, that, that first one covers all groups without being specifically about groups because of the different meanings to it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was a real shame that the original fag could obviously let people down and not making them feel that mm -hmm. and that's why it was important to have this new flag i i, I actually kind of don't like that it, it's segregating and breaking things down but i also like the fact that it's trying to include everyone and support everyone and let them know that they're loved and that's important that's what pride is all about and representation and stuff like that so if we needed to update things to make sure that people knew that and felt included, good. Yeah, so I hope you've learned something new. I know Mist has, he's been writing things down quite quickly. Uh, but coming back after this break, we have Mist and Crafty Queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now Mist is going to give us something to decorate our homes in Crafty Queens. Hello Mike. Hi Mist. This is completely ruining all street cred I have ever, ever had addressed like used, this. If you just use the phrase street cred, I don't think you've got anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. I was hoping for a date and no, it, it, it's not going to happen now, is it? This is not going on my grinder profile. It is. Um, anyway, we, we're going to do some crafty queens. Yay. Um, you will see next to you, you've got some various bits of materials. The key material being a couple of lovely eggs. I do have two eggs. Mm. Now, did you ever do this at school where you would open up a little hole on one end, open a little hole on the other and blow out the yolk? Oh, um, opening up holes is something slightly different. Um, yes, I, I, I have blown an egg before. You've blown an egg before. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Okay. And then we're going to decorate the eggs. Okay, nice. Uh, it's completely free form. You'll see that you've got uh, a little scalpel to help you uh, pierce the holes. Okay, I've got scissors. Um, well, use, use, use those, but be safe now. They're very sharp implements. And uh -huh. uh, do you remember what you were told by your therapist last time? Um, the voices that nobody else can hear don't mean that they're not real. Hmm. Um, okay, you also something. have some lovely felt materials, a bit of feathering, and, okay. and, and some and little, little, little tiny balls. All sorts of wonderful materials to decorate your egg. I am not going to dictate to you what you do. Um, maybe not doing that. Okay. 
but but the decoration is freeform. I, I, free, I, I'm going to let you okay. come up with your own. Uh, we were talking about art earlier. We were. So you can come up with your own artistic interpretations of how you want your egg to look. Okay. And we'll have a little competition later to see who's is more pretty. Okay, cool. Okay? Yeah. Right, okay, so first key thing. I've got a little mug here to uh, catch the uh, dribblings. I'm going to make a little hole in the top of the egg. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's try and make a little hole without cracking it. Without I'm not cracking too sure it. this is going to work very well. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm using the tip of my scissors. Oh, there we go. Are you in? I'm in. I cracked it without going too hard. You've got, ve you've got a very big hole there. I have got a big hole there. Gaping, some might say. My, my hole is quite small. I'm going to put my finger over the end of that. Tiny little hole. You can barely see. Well, some of us are tight. When some people call you tight, it's because life. you don't spend any money. <laughs> you've, been north, you've been up north too long. Right, let's try and get a little hole in the other end without destroying things. But, so I have... I used to get some nice little holes. Ooh, aren't you delicate? Yeah, I've been patient. Oh, <laughs> mine's, yeah. go mine's going awry. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Right. I'll let you blow first. You <laughs> oh, it's, it's dribbling out the bottom already. Okay. Let let's, let's give this a go. go on, then. Hopefully it'll be more successful than the kazoo last week. Oh, that was quite successful. Well, that's well done, you. Yeah, it came out in one nice big gloop. Yeah. How big is your hole? Um, Tell me. Let's just say I'm quite accommodating. Let me see. Don't um, make it wider. <laughs> I'm just getting rid of the little crusty bits on the sides of the rim. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> My, mine's taking a little bit longer because my hole is a very small hole. Well, you you need to like take a sniff of poppers. That'll do it. But now 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 you have a lovely empty egg. Uh huh. I don't. You, it should it should be gaping in there now. Okay. And that means it's ripe for use. It works better when you have a bigger hole. We're going to start decorating now. What kind of crap are we going to do? Uh, got some. Got some coloured card. Uh, we've got some pop outy felty bits. Got some big felty bits. And feathers. And a glue gun. Um, oh, I think I know what I might do. What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking a bit of a bunny rabbit. I was thinking bunny rabbit too. Oh, well, hey, let's see who's got the better bugs. Okay, better bugs. Better bugs. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to put a bit of hot glue on the on the hole, <laughs> and just uh, secure it to what is supposed to be, I think, a bunny's face. But I'm going to make them bunny legs. See, I'm making a bit of grass for the bunny to sit on first. Well, aren't you clever? Yes, I am. And there we go. That's why you do the science stuff. Um, yeah, that's the reason I do the okay. science stuff. And let's, I've got some pre-made little bunny faces. I think using pre-made bunny faces is cheating. Well, sod you. <laughs> All right. They're available, Cheat. and I'm going to make use of the tools that I have. Okay. Making use of the tools that you have. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pop out all the little mini bits with my little scalpel, making sure not to stab myself in the fingers in the process. Oh dear. Uh, that's a, 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 oh, I feel like I'm doing surgery. I could have been a doctor. Really? A doctor? No, I really couldn't have been a doctor. <laughs> what <laughs> kind of you doctor imagine? were you thinking? Take down your trousers, put down your pants, cough. That's the only bit I'd be able to do. <laughs> and you'd only be able to do that once before the complaints came in. <laughs> All right, let's pop out a little bunny ears. Yeah, doing a little belly first. 
Oh, and I think it's even got a little sticky film on the bottom. Love a sticky film on the bottom. I don't. See, it's all coming together already. That, that, that That's already pretty enough. Ah, uh, I see. It's, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. It's almost as good as those bricks I was talking about earlier. I'm going to cut off another pair of bunnies' ears because I'm a sadist. And we already know what I do with small furry animals, apparently. <laughs> it looks like an anime rabbit. It is an anime rabbit. Oh, dear. It's, I'm going to give it some feathers so it looks like it's been been working in, um, in in a Las Vegas drag bar. It's a rabbit that's decided to go and work in Vegas and it's it's gone up to its mates, the chicken mates and... It's chicken mates. <laughs> that's the part of the conversation I tuned into then, the chicken mates. Pluck them dry for plumage. Chopping away and making the How, How's yours going? My, my rabbit's looking amazing. Yeah, but has it got a whole backstory and, and drag career like mine? No, it's a rabbit. <sighs> where's the drama? Where's the history? Where, where's the backstory? I, 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 oh, if only I had a red pen. I don't have a red pen. Um, Poor tradesman blaming the tools there. Well, uh, just woefully un, un, uh, yeah, underfunded. I'm, I'm basically saying this show's cheap. We are cheap. Everybody knows that. So I'm just going to stick arse plumage on. See, everybody wants some art. Now I've been doing it, you want to do well, it. Well, it's a rabbit. It needs a, pu a puffy tail, doesn't it? It does need a puffy tail. And that's tail. what I've put on. I've put on a puffy tail. Well, actually, good, good job you've reminded me, actually. He does need a bit of a tail in his bum. So let me just complete my masterpiece. I'm being rushed by the gallery here. Uh, but you don't rush art. You don't rush art. Art is beautiful. This isn't art, though, so you're... Uh, I feel that my masterpiece is complete. <sighs> and as I have to say this, if you can't get any peen, or any vagine, or anything in between, be a crafty queen. So, uh... <laughs> I, th I think if the viewers were to vote in, my mine's the pretty one. It's got a tiny face. <laughs> it has got a tiny face. A She's massive delicate. arms. Massive arms and feathers. A, a, a perfect Las Vegas drag queen bunny rabbit. Look, what? you've got me dressed like this. I'm having none of your nonsense. <laughs> if I'm dressed like this, that's the pretty one. You said yes to putting that on, though. <sighs> Only because I'm forced to. Forced is the tab on. OK. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a lot. Well, uh, that, thankfully, is almost the end of the show. Just remember to join us on our social media, at The Cud TV. Even says tabard, just saying. Um, but that's all from this week, and we'll see you all soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have you ever heard of something that's, like, truly upsetting? Yeah.